We're here, our float plane just dropped us off on a lake and this is the kickstart to our 21 day hunting expedition. There's like five goats. Hey, who's the first goat shooter? You're the first goat shooter. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we got some caribou right behind us here. It's not a bad spot. We spent almost four of the six days in the tent. Come over another hill. We got two adult goats just at the bottom here. 342 yards. What's happening here, boys? He's down. <laughs> This Billy, he's a tank. He's sitting there, 429, bedded right now. I'd love to take him, but I'm just thinking about this pack. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be a big pack if we put two of these goats down right now. Ah, oh, man. And it's a far shot. And I don't have my rifle, I'd be using Trav's. So we just got down into the basin. We're just under 250 yards now. The big billy is the lower one on that ridge side. So we got a couple things playing in our advantage right now. The sun is beaming on them right in their eyes. So it's gonna be hard for them to see. The wind is just howling. So it's gonna be really hard for them to hear. So I don't wanna take this shot unless I can get under 100 yards. So we're gonna get up that spine right there get right on top of them. I'm gonna shoot down on that big belly. Six yards. 
I don't. They're just kind of piled on top of each other, bedded. So I'm not sure which one's which. We're gonna have to take our time here, make sure that we shoot the right goal. Dirty double. Holy jeez. He's at 36 yards. <laughs> jeez, man. I didn't really want to shoot two because of the long pack out, but whatever. This is, that's a beauty goat. He is big. Now we're going to have ourselves a crazy pack out of here. We got like 14 kilometers to pack out of this place. Up and down mountains, it's, uh, it's going to be a slog, but. <laughs> well, we're, we're down under 20 yards and these other goats just won't leave this one alone. Bachelor herd of bellies, this guy was definitely the ringleader and we took him out but now they're kind of just being like, hey man, let's go, come on. That's not quite happening. Definitely never been so close to a live goat before. These guys must not know what humans are back here. <laughs> what a beautiful sight though. I mean, it's always nice to harvest an animal, but just to be able to be out here and watch them in, you know, their natural habitat this close, like that guy's 10 yards. When I'm out here and we're doing this, being able to kind of watch and experience nature like we are is, is a big part of why we do this. You know, pulling the trigger is just a small fraction of the reason that we come out here. Yes, we come out and hunt, but the experiences that you get when you're out hunting are stuff that'll change your life and stuff that most people never get to experience in their entire lives. Like, look, we got a goat standing 25 yards behind us right now as we're sitting here video that goat there's a really good chance it's never seen a human before in its life so having the ability to do this as our job now as a career is something that i really take pride in and something that just makes me happy to be able to come out here and do We've just harvested two beautiful goats. Now we're gonna have to break that meat down, pack it all the way back out. We got 14 kilometer pack out out of here, up and down mountains. But once that meat gets to our destination, we put it in a cooler and that's stuff that's gonna feed us for the rest of the year. And you know, this is the first time that Trav and I have ever been out goat hunting. Never been, never goat hunted before. And to be able to have such a, just beautiful experience like this. It's something that's definitely gonna make me keep coming back, that's for sure. Raw nature. 
nature. The land will provide, ladies and gentlemen. If you let it, it will provide. <laughs> oh, jeez, man. Look at this beautiful animal. He's big. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. I didn't think they were gonna be this big. What an absolute beautiful animal. Thick wool on them too. I think I'm gonna pack this hide out of here. It's beautiful. You know, it's my first time ever out goat hunting. So I don't know that much about goats, but I do know that their ears are usually about five inches. So when you put that beside that, that's gonna give me probably a nine, nine or 10 inch goat. He's got some real wide bases on him. Big thick glands in the back there. He's just a stud. Thank you, my friend. Oh my God, look at that thing. Look at the bases on that. <laughs> Not bad for a couple first time goat hunters, Not eh? Not bad at all. I, walked, I was really, really curious about their feet. Just like a big deer. It's crazy, but they're pointed out almost. Holy man, what an incredible stock and everything else, eh? That was really good. I wasn't planning on shooting this goat, but he said if I get under 100 yards, we'll make it happen. 36 yards. <laughs> 36, <laughs> 36 yards. 36 <laughs> yards. <laughs> Let's go check out yours, Trev. Let's do it. See what the double has to offer here. Your first mountain Animal, Trav, big game. Big right game. Right here. Check them out. Another beauty, Billy. <laughs> Doesn't have the coat on him like yours does, but he's a good size. He's like black size. tips, eh? That's yeah. cool. Oh yeah, he's got good bases, I would say. Uh. Nice goat. Just fit one finger in here, that is it. <laughs> they make the double happen again, eh? Made it happen. Good job, dude. <laughs> Your furthest kill shot, eh? Furthest kill shot right there. Well, Four actually, yeah, my second shot, 400. morning this just snapped on cheese ours is holding up but i don't know for how long cheese is coming in to bump us get out of the rain get out of the wind All right, well, we got camp all packed up and now we're just gonna debone the meat. It's been sitting up in uh, the rocks, kinda in a little bit of a cave overnight. So the meat should be nice and cold. So now we're actually gonna start deboning it all to try and take as much weight off as possible because we got a pretty big trek ahead of us today and we obviously wanna be making sure that we're carrying the least weight as possible as we're doing 12 to 14 kilometers up and down over mountains. It's gonna be a heck of a day in a big pack. It's snowing now. Well, more like a hail slash snow. The boys are down the bottom of the hill behind me here. 
They're tearing down camp. We had a crazy windstorm last night. It's still pretty windy here. I'm kind of sheltered where we hid the meat last night. So I'm gonna do all the deboning here, get everything ready so that when camp's uh, torn down, we can lo load up the stone glaciers, head down the mountain, up to a little lake that's down there, out of the wind, some firewood, we can have a fire warm up and cook some of this uh, goat meat here. I can't wait to try it. When it comes to deboning, a lot of people kind of overthink it. I'm more of a get it off the, the bone and then you can separate it into your cuts uh, when you get home. Basically what I do is I just find the femur or the knuckle, like the, the hip joint, if it's on a, on a rear quarter. I'll start from there, follow the bone down all the way up to the ankle or the foot and then just start peeling it off with the knife. Just go around the bone. Stone Glacier makes these really nice load cell bags which fit nicely into the back of the pack into the load shelf. So I'm going to load up one goat. Well, we're going to try anyways. There's a lot of meat there, but load up one goat into the load cell bag and then get it set up in the back. The nice thing about these load cell bags is they also act as a bit of a rain retarder so it is raining out here pretty good we don't want this meat to get wet especially it's been nice and dry and cool all night so as we're hiking through and packing out of here in the rain this will be pretty nice there you go that is a full 55 60 pounds in there So we got the uh, meat all loaded up in the packs. And this is it, beginning of a big journey. Let's see if we can even stand up with these things. <laughs> Slippery, wet, boulders. Not a great combination with a lot of weight on your back. Well, that was a big day. That was eight hours. Whew. I, that's a heavy pack. Probably about 55, 60 pounds worth of meat plus gear. We're pushing 100 pounds there. And I mean, just nonstop ups and downs through these big boulder fields. I uh, almost stayed on the mountain today. <laughs> I first slipped kind of rolled down and hurt one of my shins so I was trying to keep weight off it and we got into this big bouldery moss field with loose rocks so I'm walking trying to keep weight off my right leg and I slipped and with all this extra weight it just jammed my leg down into a big hole and then right here there was a sharp rock so as I'm in there I go to like brace myself and I grab this giant boulder which is now tipping on me like this so it was putting pressure here and then that was off the mountain so i kind of fortunately held it until trav could come and help me but i mean if trav wasn't there i might have had to stay on the mountain for the whole 21 days and just hunt with hunt from that spot with a broken leg or something there <laughs> wait for a sheep to come by but yeah near miss a little bit scary but hey we're all in one piece we're here we're going to set up camp and uh maybe cook some goat <laughs>
we'll see if there's firewood around. I don't know, but set up camp. Well, it's about 11 o'clock now. We got camp all broken down and we're gonna do our final push out of here to the base camp, pack this meat out. We got about 10 kilometers to go. Should be a lot easier walking today. No big boulder fields, all that kind of stuff. It's just like we get to this valley bottom, we hike up to the summit of that mountain and then just over the next ridge to our camp. So about 10 kilometers, four or five hours, we should be there, hopefully. It's the plan anyway, so we'll see how it goes. Well, this is it. We're at the lake, and this is the end of a monster pack out 14 and a half, between 14 and a half, 15 kilometers, multiple mountains, and <laughs> we're at the base camp tent. And this is one of my favorite parts of any big hunt, is you, you get here and you finally get to take off this pack, sit down, look back, and know everything that you just accomplished. Like we just came in here, harvested two really great goats, and now we got another 10 days back here where we get to go after some sheep <laughs> and two more mountain caribou. Oh, This hunt ain't over yet, folks. We'll see you guys next week.